Hello again, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. Uh, this is being prepared on the 8th of May for release on Thursday, May the 10th. And uh, I'm going to answer another email question. And of course, we get lots of them. And, and, and we have some very good questions from time to time, such as this one from Jack. And uh, Jack writes, how do you explain the passage in Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 5, as saying that the nations will be converted before Christ returns and the wealth of nations will come to the church? And I am really eager to answer this question because the way Jack is reading Isaiah chapter 60 uh, is interpreting... <clears throat> the entity in question there as the church. Now, Jack, I don't believe that's uh, what's being said in Isaiah 60 at all, and I'm going to start in Isaiah 60, uh, verse 1, and read on. Because in my opinion, this is not talking about the church at all, but rather is talking about the glory of Israel in the days of the kingdom. Verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So what we have here, in my opinion, is the, the days of the kingdom. Uh, as, as the Lord comes back <clears throat> and illuminates the entire world, but most particularly, it's got to be noted that his glory originates in Israel when he returns to set up the kingdom there. Now, verse 3 continues this story. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Who is the pronoun thy in this case? Well, it's Israel, because this whole passage starts out, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Uh, here, thy light would be uh, the coming of the Messiah to Israel, which is referred to as thy. And verse 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee. And in this case, the pronoun thee is, uh, once again, Israel. Uh, the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Then verse 3 says, <clears throat> And the Gentiles shall come to thy light. In other words, uh, when the Lord returns and his glory is upon Israel, the Gentile nations will come. And as we learn in other parts of Isaiah, they will pay tribute to Israel, <clears throat> which will become the head of the nations. So reading verse 3 again, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Speaking of the rising again of Israel. And in fact, uh, in the prophecies of Moses, we read about the fall and the rising again of Israel. Verse 4 says, Lift up thine eyes round about, and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee, thy sons shall come from far, thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. So again here we're talking about the rising again of the nation Israel. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because uh, the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Now, this is a very plain statement that when the Lord returns and illuminates the kingdom of Israel with his glory, uh, the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. In other words, the Gentiles will pay tribute to the revived national Israel in the kingdom days. And it goes on and on in this light. Verse 6, the multitude of camels shall cover thee, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, and they from Sheba shall come. Uh, they shall bring gold and incense. They shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. And they shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. And here, 
It's the Lord speaking. I will glorify the house of my glory. In other words, there's going to be a new temple. He's going to dwell there, and it will be a house of glory, and it will be recognized as such by nations all over the world. And so uh, to answer your letter, Jack, and again, you, uh, your, your, your first question is, how do you explain the passage in Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 5, as many are saying, the nations will be converted before Christ returns, and the wealth of nations will come to the church. Well, uh, it is not the church that is receiving the wealth of nations. It, it is obviously Israel after the return of the Messiah. <clears throat> and reading on, uh, and I've read just a little farther than your question covered, but I think it's worth it. Uh, verse 8 says, Who are these that fly as a cloud? And as the doves to their windows. There's a mysterious question about uh, people actually flying to visit the nation Israel. Verse 9, Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first. Well, the word isles here in verse 9 is igim, which means continents. So we have here a reference to the continents of the world. Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, their, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. And again, it says, he hath glorified thee. That is, the Messiah has glorified Israel. Uh, the Bible very, very clearly states that the Lord's second coming <clears throat> will be to the house of David, and it very clearly states that he will participate in the rebuilding of the third temple. His glory will reside there. The nations will come to Israel from all over the world and pay tribute to Israel. And nothing could be clearer than that. And here we come to a basic, I think, uh, a, a basic element of prophetic interpretation in the Bible. You must separate the prophecies made uh, concerning Israel from the prophecies made concerning the church. And this is a very clear-cut case in which Isaiah 60 refers uh, very clearly to a prophecy made concerning Israel and its glorification in the days of, uh, or the days following the second coming of Christ. Uh, I do appreciate the question. Once again, Jack, uh, thanks for that question, and, and I hope this has clarified it for you. Uh, I am a dispensationalist. Dispensationalists believe that we now live in the church age, which is going to end. After that will come the kingdom age, the second coming of Christ, the rebuilding of the temple, the rise of the nation Israel. And so for me, there is no problem at all understanding prophecies like this. And uh, it, it is because we separate the flow of history into different uh, economies, if you will. Currently, we're living in... Uh, under the aegis of the economy of the church, soon there will be a great change and a tribulation period, the second coming of Christ, and the economy will shift to Israel, which will become the head of the nations. Ah, we're living in exciting times, big changes ahead, and for this reason, we always end by saying, keep looking up, everybody. Everybody.